Yogachara IAST, Yogacara, literally, yoga practice. One whose practice is yoga is an influential tradition of Buddhist philosophy and psychology emphasizing the study of cognition, perception, and consciousness through the interior lens of meditative and yogic practices. It is also variously termed Vijnanavada, the doctrine of consciousness, Vijnaptavada, the doctrine of ideas or percepts, or Vijnaptamatrata Vada, the doctrine of mere Vijnapti, which is also the name given to its major epistemic theory. There are several interpretations of this main theory. Some scholars see it as a kind of idealism, while others argue that it is closer to a kind of phenomenology or representationalism. According to Dan Lusthaus, this tradition developed an elaborate psychological therapeutic system that mapped out the problems in cognition along with the antidotes to correct them, and an earnest epistemological endeavor that led to some of the most sophisticated work on perception and logic ever engaged in by Buddhists or Indians. The 4th century Indian brothers, Asanga and Vasubandhu, are considered the classic philosophers and systematizers of this school. It was associated with Indian Mahayana Buddhism in about the 4th century, but also included non Mahayana practitioners of the Dastantika school. Yogacara continues to be influential in Tibetan Buddhism and East Asian Buddhism. However, the uniformity of a single assumed Yogacara school has been put into question. Doctrine Yogacara philosophy is primarily meant to aid in the practice of yoga and meditation and thus it also sets forth a systematic analysis of the Mahayana spiritual path see Five Paths Pankarmaga. Yogacarans made use of ideas from previous traditions, such as Prajnaparamita and the Sarvastivada Abhidharma, to develop a new schema for spiritual practice. According to Thomas Kachumatam, Yogacara is meant to be an explanation of experience, rather than a system of ontology. For this reason, Yogacarans developed an Abhidharma literature set within a Mahayana framework. In its analysis, Yogacara works like the Sandhinirmakana Sutra developed various core concepts such as Vijnapti Matra, the Alaya Vijnana store consciousness, the turning of the basis Asrayaparavti, the three natures Trisvavava, and emptiness. They form a complex system, and each can be taken as a point of departure for understanding Yogacara. The doctrine of Vijnapti Matra One of the main features of Yogacara philosophy is the concept of Vijnapti Matra. According to Lambert Schmihausen, the earliest surviving appearance of this term is in Chapter 8 of the Sandhinirmakana Sutra, which unfortunately, has only survived in Tibetan and Chinese translations that differ in syntax and meaning. The passage is depicted as a response by the Buddha to a question which asks, whether the images or replicas Pratibimba which are the object Gakara of meditative concentration Samadhi, are different, separate Vina from the contemplating mind or not. The Buddha says they are not different, because these images are Vijnapti Matra. The text goes on to affirm that the same is true for objects of ordinary perception. Regarding existing Sanskrit sources, the term appears in the first verse of Vasubandhu's Vimsatika, which is a locus classicus of the idea. It states, Vinaptamatram evitad asad arthavavasanat yatha timirikasyasat kesa kandradi dasanam. This world is Vijnaptamatra, since it manifests itself as an unreal object Arthur, just like the case of those with cataracts seeing unreal hairs in the moon and the like. According to Mark Sidritz, what Vasubandhu means here is that we are only ever aware of mental images or impressions which manifest themselves as external objects, but, "...there is actually no such thing outside the mind." The term also appears in Asinga's classic Yogacara work, the Mahayana Samgraha, no Sanskrit original, trans, from Tibetan. These representations are mere representations, matra, because there is no corresponding thing, object. Arthur. 
Just as in a dream there appear, even without a thing, object Arthur, just in the mind alone, forms, images of all kinds of things, objects like visibles, sounds, smells, tastes, tangibles, houses, forests, land, and mountains, and yet there are no such things, objects at all in that place. MSG 11.6 The term is sometimes used as a synonym with cheetah matra mere cheetah, which is also used a name for the school that suggests idealism. Schmihausen writes that the first appearance of this term is in the Prachupana Samadhi Sutra, which states, this or whatever belongs to this triple world is nothing but mind or thought sitamatra. Why? Because however I imagine things, that is how they appear. Topic. Interpretations of this doctrine Some modern scholars believe it is a mistake to conflate the two terms, however. David Kalupahana argues that Chita Matra signifies a metaphysical reification of mind into an absolute, while Vinapti Matra refers to a certain epistemological approach. While the standard translations for these terms are often consciousness only and mind only", signifying an idealistic doctrine, several modern scholars object to these, as well as to idealistic interpretation. According to Bruce Cameron Hall, the interpretation of this doctrine as a form of subjective or absolute idealism has been, "...the most common", outside, "...interpretation of Vijnanavada, not only by modern writers, but by its ancient opponents, both Hindu and Buddhist." Different alternative translations for Vinapti Matra have been proposed, such as representation only, ideation only, impressions only and perception only. Alex Wayman notes that one's interpretation of Yogacara will depend on how the qualifier Matra is to be understood in this context, and he objects to interpretations which claim that Yogacara rejects the external world altogether, preferring translations such as amounting to mind, or mirroring mind for cheetah matra for wayman what this doctrine means is that the mind has only a report or representation of what the sense organ had sensed the representationalist interpretation is also supported by stefan anika and thomas a kachumatam modern translators of vasubandhu's works according to thomas kachumatam yogacara is a realistic pluralism it does not deny the existence of individual beings and is against any idea of an absolute mind or monistic reality. Other scholars, such as S. A. A. M. Trivedi, argue that Yogacara is similar to idealism, closer to a Kantian epistemic idealism, though they note that it is its own unique form and that it might be confusing to categorize it as such. Paul Williams, citing Griffiths, writes that it could be termed dynamic idealism. Sean Butler argues for the idealistic nature of Yogacara, noting that there are numerous similarities between Yogacara and the systems of Kant and Berkeley. Jay Garfield also argues that Yogacara is akin to the idealisms defended by such Western philosophers as Berkeley, Kant and Schopenhauer. However, according to Dan Lusthaus, the Vinapti Matra theory is closer in some ways to Western phenomenological theories and epistemological idealism or transcendental idealism, but it is not a ontological idealism because Yogacara rejects the construction of metaphysical or ontological theories. Moreover, Western idealism lacks any counterpart to karma, samsara or awakening, which are central for Yogacara. Regarding Vinapti Matra, Lusthaus translates it as nothing but conscious construction, and states it is, a deceptive trick is built into the way consciousness operates at every moment. Consciousness projects and constructs a cognitive object in such a way that it disowns its own creation, pretending the object is out there, in order to render that object capable of being appropriated. Even while what we cognize is occurring within our act of cognition, we cognize it as if it were external to our consciousness. Realization of Vinapti Matra exposes this trick intrinsic to consciousness's workings, thereby eliminating it. When that deception is removed one's mode of cognition is no longer termed Vijnana consciousness, it has become direct cognition see above. 
Consciousness engages in this deceptive game of projection, dissociation, and appropriation because there is no self. According to Buddhism, the deepest, most pernicious erroneous view held by sentient beings is the view that a permanent, eternal, immutable, independent self exists. There is no such self, and deep down we know that. This makes us anxious, since it entails that no self or identity endures forever. In order to assuage that anxiety, we attempt to construct a self, to fill the anxious void, to do something enduring. The projection of cognitive objects for appropriation is consciousness's main tool for this construction. If I own things ideas, theories, identities, material objects, then I am. Quote, if there are eternal objects that I can possess, then I too must be eternal. To undermine this desperate and erroneous appropriative grasping, Yogacara texts say, negate the object, and the self is also negated e.g., Majanta Vibhaga, 1–4, Therefore, when Yogacara discusses cognitive objects visaya, they are analyzing cognition, not positing or denying metaphysical entities. While Yogacara posits that cognitive objects are real, it denies Arthas, objects of intentionality or a telos toward which an act of consciousness intends, which are outside the cognitive act in which it is that which is intended. So according to Lusthaus, Yogacarans don't claim that nothing whatsoever exists outside the mind, and Consciousness enjoys no transcendent status, nor does it serve as a metaphysical foundation. Consciousness is real by virtue of its facticity, the fact that sentient beings experience cognitions, and not because of an ontological primacy. In this way, instead of offering an ontological theory, Yogacara focuses on understanding and eliminating the underlying tendencies anusaya that lead to clinging to ontological constructions, which are just cognitive projections pratibimba, parikalpita. Jonathan Gold writes that the Yogacara thinker Vasubandhu can be said to be an idealist similar to Kant, in the sense that for him, everything in experience as well as its causal support is mental, and thus he gives causal priority to the mental. At the same time however, this is only in the conventional realm, since mind is just another concept and true reality for Vasubandhu is ineffable, an inconceivable thusness to Thata. Indeed, the Vimsatika states that the very idea of Vinapti Matra must also be understood to be itself a self-less construction and thus Vinapti Matra is not the ultimate truth Satya in Yogacara. Thus according to Gold, while Vasubandhu's Vinapti Matra can be said to be a conventionalist idealism, it is to be seen as unique and different from Western forms, especially Hegelian absolute idealism. Topic. Arguments in defense of this doctrine Yogacara philosophers were aware of the objections that could be brought against their doctrine. Vasubandhu's Vimsatika mentions three and refutes them. The problem of spatio-temporal determination or non-arbitrariness in regard to place and time. There must be some external basis for our experiences since experiences of any particular object are not occurrent everywhere and at every time. Vasubandhu explains this by using the dream argument, which shows how a world created by mind can still seem to have spatio-temporal localization. The problem of multiple minds experiencing the same object or intersubjective agreement. Vasubandhu counters that mass hallucinations such as those said to occur to hungry ghosts caused by the fact they share similar karma, show that intersubjective agreement is possible without positing real external objects. Hallucinations have no pragmatic results, efficacy or causal functions and thus can be determined to be unreal, but entities we generally accept as being real have actual causal results that cannot be of the same class as hallucinations. Against this claim, Vasubandhu argues that waking life is the same as in a dream, where objects have pragmatic results within the very rules of the dream. 
He also uses the example of a wet dream to show that mental content can have causal efficacy outside of a dream. According to Mark Sideritz, after disposing of these objections, Vasubandhu believes he has shown that Vinapti Matra is just as good at explaining and predicting the relevant phenomena of experience as any theory of realism that posits external objects. Therefore, he then applies the Indian philosophical principle termed the principle of lightness which is similar to Occam's razor, to rule out realism since Vinapti Matra is the simpler and «lighter» theory. That is, the theory that posits the least number of unobservable entities. Another objection that Vasubandhu answers is that of how one person can influence another's experiences, if everything arises from mental karmic seeds in one's mind stream. Vasubandhu argues that Impressions can also be caused in a mental stream by the occurrence of a distinct impression in another suitably linked mental stream. As Sideritz notes, this account can explain how it is possible to influence or even totally disrupt murder another mind, even if there is no physical medium or object in existence, since a suitably strong enough intention in one mind stream can have effects on another mind stream. From the Vinapti Matra position, it is easier to posit a mind to mind causation than to have to explain mind to body causation, which the realist must do. However, Sideritz then goes on to question whether Vasubandhu's position is indeed lighter, since he must make use of multiple interactions between different minds to take into account an intentionally created artifact, like a pot. Since we can be aware of a pot even when we are not linked, to the potter's intentions, even after the potter is dead, a more complex series of mental interactions must be posited. In disproving the possibility of external objects, Vasubandhu's Vimsatika also attacks Indian theories of atomism and property particulars as incoherent on meriological grounds. Vasubandhu also explains why it is soteriologically important to get rid of the idea of really existing external objects. According to Sideritz, this is because, when we wrongly imagine there to be external objects we are led to think in terms of the duality of grasped and grasper, of what is out there and what is in here in short, of external world and self. Coming to see that there is no external world is a means, Vasubandhu thinks, of overcoming a very subtle way of believing in an I. Once we see why physical objects can't exist we will lose all temptation to think there is a true me within. There are really just impressions, but we superimpose on these the false constructions of object and subject. Seeing this will free us from the false conception of an I. Sideritz notes how Kant had a similar notion, that is, without the idea of an objective mind-independent world, one cannot arrive the concept of a subjective I. But Kant drew the opposite conclusion to Vasubandhu, since he held that we must believe in an enduring subject, and thus, also believe in external objects. <laughs> Karma An explanation of the Buddhist doctrine of karma action is central to Yogacara, and the school sought to explain important questions such as how moral actions can have effects on individuals long after that action was done, that is, how karmic causality works across temporal distances. Previous Abhidharma Buddhist schools like the Sautrantika had developed theories of karma based on the notion of seeds in the mind stream, which are unseen karmic habits good and bad which remain until they meet with the necessary conditions to manifest. Yogacara adopts and expanded this theory. Yogacara then posited the storehouse consciousness, Sanskrit, alayavinana, also known as the basal, or eighth consciousness, as the container of the seeds. It simultaneously acts as a storage place for karmic latencies and as a fertile matrix of predispositions that bring karma to a state of fruition. In the Yogacara system, all experience without exception is said to result from karma or mental intention satana, either arising from one's own subliminal seeds or from other minds. For Yogacara, the seemingly external or dualistic world is merely a byproduct of karma. The term vasana, perfuming, 
is also used when explaining karma, and Yogacarans were divided on the issue of whether Vasana and Bija were essentially the same, whether the seeds were the effect of the perfuming, or whether the perfuming simply affected the seeds. The type, quantity, quality and strength of the seeds determine where and how a sentient being will be reborn, one's race, gender, social status, proclivities, bodily appearance and so forth. The conditioning of the mind resulting from karma is called samskara. Vasubandhu's treatise on action treats the subject of karma in detail from the Yogacara perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Analysis of consciousness Yogacara gives a detailed explanation of the workings of the mind and the way it constructs the reality we experience. According to Lusthaus, "...the most famous innovation of the Yogacara school was the doctrine of eight consciousnesses. These eight bodies of consciousnesses." Astavinanakaya are the five sense consciousnesses, chitta mentality, manas self consciousness, and the storehouse or substratum consciousness (SKT) Traditional Buddhist descriptions of consciousness taught just the first six vijnanas, each corresponding to a sense base ayatana and having their own sense objects. Standard Buddhist doctrine held that these eighteen datas or components of experience exhaust the full extent of everything in the universe, or more accurately, the sensorium." These six consciousnesses are also not substantial entities, but a series of events, arising and vanishing, stretching back from beginningless time Buddhist Abhidharma expanded and developed this basic model and Yogacara responded by rearranging these into their own schema which had three novel forms of consciousness. The sixth consciousness, Mano Vijnana, was seen as the surveyor of the content of the five senses as well as of mental content like thoughts and ideas. The seventh consciousness developed from the early Buddhist concept of manas, and was seen as the defiled mentation manas, which is obsessed with notions of self. According to Paul Williams, this consciousness takes the substratum consciousness as its object and mistakenly considers the substratum consciousness to be a true self." The eighth consciousness, Alaya Vijnana storehouse or repository consciousness, was defined as the storehouse of all karmic seeds, where they gradually matured until ripe, at which point they manifested as karmic consequences. Because of this, it is also called the "...mind which has all the seeds." Sarvabhijakam Sittam, as well as the basic consciousness, Mula Vijnana, and the appropriating consciousness, Adana Vijnana. According to the Sandhinirmakana Sutra, this kind of consciousness underlies and supports the six types of manifest awareness, all of which occur simultaneously with the Alaya. William S. Waldron sees this simultaneity of all the modes of cognitive awareness as the most significant departure of Yogacara theory from traditional Buddhist models of Vijnana, which were "...thought to occur solely in conjunction with their respective sense bases and epistemic objects." The Alaya Vijnana is also what experiences rebirth into future lives and what descends into the womb to appropriate the fetal material. Therefore, the Alaya Vijnana's holding on to the body's sense faculties and Profuse imaginings are the two appropriations which make up the kindling or fuel lit upadana that samsaric existence depends upon. Yogacara thought thus holds that being unaware of the processes going on in the Alaya Vijnana is an important element of ignorance. Avidya. The Alaya is also individual, so that each person has their own Alaya Vijnana, which is an ever-changing process and therefore not a permanent self. According to Williams, this consciousness seen as a defiled form of consciousness or perhaps sub or unconsciousness, is personal, individual, continually changing and yet serving to give a degree of personal identity and to explain why it is that certain karmic results pertain to this particular individual. The seeds are momentary, but they give rise to a perfume series which eventually culminates in the result including, from seeds of a particular type, the whole phenomenal world. 
Also, Asanga and Vasubandhu write that the Alaya Vijnana ceases at awakening, becoming transformed into a pure consciousness, according to Waldron. While there were various similar concepts in other Buddhist Abhidharma schools which sought to explain karmic continuity, the Alaya Vijnana is the most comprehensive and systematic. Waldron notes that the Alaya Vijnana concept was probably influenced by these theories, particularly the Sautrantika theory of seeds and Vasumitra's theory of a subtle form of mind. However, for Kalupahana, this classification of Alaya Vijnana and Manas as an eighth and seventh category of consciousness is based on a misunderstanding of Vasubandhu's Trimsikaika Karika by later adherents. Instead referring to separate consciousnesses, Kalupahana interprets these terms as referring to a function or transformation of consciousness. These transformations are threefold according to Kalupahana. The first is the alaya and its seeds, which is the flow or stream of consciousness, without any of the usual projections on top of it. The second transformation is manjana, self consciousness or self-view, self-confusion, self-esteem and self-love. It is thinking about the various perceptions occurring in the stream of consciousness. The alaya is defiled by this self-interest. The third transformation is Visayavinapti, the concept of the object. In this transformation the concept of objects is created. By creating these concepts human beings become susceptible to grasping after the object, as if it were a real object sad Arthur, even though it is just a conception Vinapti, a similar perspective which emphasizes Yogacara's continuity with early Buddhism is given by Walpola Rahula. According to Rahula, all the elements of this theory of consciousness with its three layers of Vijnana are already found in the Pali Canon. Thus we can see that Vijnana represents the simple reaction or response of the sense organs when they come in contact with external objects. This is the uppermost or superficial aspect or layer of the Vijnana skanda. Manas represents the aspect of its mental functioning, thinking, reasoning, conceiving ideas, etc. Chitta which is here called Alayavijnana, represents the deepest, finest and subtlest aspect or layer of the aggregate of consciousness. It contains all the traces or impressions of the past actions and all good and bad future possibilities. The three natures and emptiness Yogacara works often define three basic modes or natures svervava, of experience. Jonathan Gold explains that the three natures are all one reality viewed from three distinct angles. They are the appearance, the process, and the emptiness of that same apparent entity. According to Paul Williams, all things which can be known can be subsumed under these three natures. Since this schema is Yogacara's systematic explanation of the Buddhist doctrine of emptiness sunyata, each of the three natures are also explained as having a lack of own nature nihavavata. Vasubandhu's Trisvavava Nirdesa gives a brief definition of these three natures. What appears is the dependent. How it appears is the fabricated. Because of being dependent on conditions. Because of being only fabrication. The eternal non-existence of the appearance as it is appears, that is known to be the perfected nature, because of being always the same. What appears there? The unreal fabrication. How does it appear? As a dual self. What is its non-existence? That by which the non-dual reality is there. Quote, in detail, three natures are parikalpita svervava the fully conceptualized nature. This is the imaginary or constructed nature, wherein things are incorrectly comprehended based on conceptual construction, through the activity of language and through attachment and erroneous discrimination which attributes intrinsic existence to things. 
According to the Mahayana Samgraha, it also refers to the appearance of things in terms of subject-object dualism, literally grasper and grasped. Quote, closing parenthesis dot. The conceptualized nature is the world of everyday unenlightened people, i.e. samsara, and it is false and empty, it does not really exist see Trimsika v. 20. According to Xuanzang's Cheng Wei Shi Lun, there is the absence of an existential nature by its very defining characteristic, Laksana Nihavavata. Because these conceptualized natures and distinct characteristics are wrongly imputed not truly real. They are like mirages and blossoms in the sky. Paratantra Svevava literally, other dependent, which is the dependently originated nature of dharmas, or the causal flow of phenomena which is erroneously confused into the conceptualized nature. According to Williams, it is the basis for the erroneous partition into supposedly intrinsically existing subjects and objects which marks the conceptualized nature." Jonathan Gold writes that it is, "...the causal process of the thing's fabrication, the causal story that brings about the thing's apparent nature." This basis is considered to be an ultimately existing paramatha basis in classical Yogacara see Mahayana Samgraha, However, as Xuanzang notes, this nature is also empty in that there is an absence of an existential nature in conditions that arise and perish. Utpati nihavavata. That is, the events in this causal flow, while seeming to have real existence of their own, are actually like magical illusions since they are said to only be hypothetical and not really exist on their own. As Sideritz writes, to the extent that we are thinking of it at all, even if only as the non-dual flow of impressions only, we are still conceptualizing it." Parinispana svervava literally, fully accomplished, the consummated nature, or the true nature of things, the experience of suchness or thatness tathata, discovered in meditation unaffected by conceptualization or language. It is defined as the complete absence, in the dependent nature, of objects, that is, the objects of the conceptualized nature." See Mahayana Samgraha, 2–4. What this refers to is that empty non-dual experience which has been stripped of the duality of the constructed nature through yajic praxis. According to Williams, this is, "...what has to be known for enlightenment," and Sideritz defines it as, just pure seeing without any attempt at conceptualization or interpretation. Now this is also empty, but only of itself as an interpretation. That is, this mode of cognition is devoid of all concepts, and so is empty of being of the nature of the perfected. About it nothing can be said or thought, it is just pure immediacy." According to Xuanzang, it has the absence of any existential nature of ultimate meaning paramatha nihavavata since it is completely free from any clinging to entirely imagined speculations about its identity or purpose because of this it is conventionally said that it does not exist however it is also not entirely without a real existence the central meaning of emptiness in yogacara is a twofold absence of duality. The first element of this is the unreality of any conceptual duality such as physical and non-physical, self and other. To define something conceptually is to divide the world into what it is and what it is not, but the world is a causal flux that does not accord with conceptual constructs. The second element of this is a perceptual duality between the sensorium and its objects, between what is external and internal, between subject grahaka, literally grasper, and object grea, grasped. This is also an unreal superimposition, since there is really no such separation of inner and outer, but an interconnected causal stream of mentality which is falsely divided up. 
An important difference between the Yogacara conception of emptiness and the Madhyamaka conception is that in classical Yogacara, emptiness does exist and so does consciousness, while Madhyamaka refuses to endorse such existential statements. The Madhyantavabhaga for example, states, "...there exists the imagination of the unreal there is no duality, but there is emptiness, even in this there is that." which indicates that even though the dualistic imagination is unreal and empty, it does exist. Contra Madhyamaka, which was criticized by Vasubandhu and Asanga for being nihilistic see Vimsatika v. 10, the Yogacara position is that there is something that exists the Paratantra Svervava that is mere vinapti, and that it is empty. The Bodhisattvapumi likewise argues that it is only logical to speak of emptiness if there is something e. dharmata, that is empty. Thus a Sangha speaks of emptiness as the non-existence of the self, and the existence of the no-self. The Yogacara school also gave special significance to the lesser discourse on emptiness of the Agamas. It is often quoted in later Yogacara texts as a true definition of emptiness. Meditation and awakening As the name of the school suggests, meditation practice is central to the Yogacara tradition. Practice manuals prescribe the practice of mindfulness of body, feelings, thoughts and dharmas in oneself and others, out of which a revolutionary and radically transformative understanding of the non-duality of self and other is said to arise. This process is referred to as asrayaparivti, overturning the cognitive basis, or revolution of the basis, which refers to overturning the conceptual projections and imaginings which act as the base of our cognitive actions. This event is seen as the transformation of the basic mode of cognition into jayanana knowledge, direct knowing, which is seen as a non-dual knowledge that is non-conceptual nirvikalpa, i.e., devoid of interpretive overlay. When this occurs, the eight consciousnesses come to an end and are replaced by direct knowings. According to Lusthaus, overturning the basis turns the five sense consciousnesses into immediate cognitions that accomplish what needs to be done The sixth consciousness becomes immediate cognitive mastery in which the general and particular characteristics of things are discerned just as they are. This discernment is considered nonconceptual Manus becomes the immediate cognition of equality samata jayanana, equalizing self and other. When the warehouse consciousness finally ceases it is replaced by the great mirror cognition jayanana, that sees and reflects things just as they are, impartially, without exclusion, prejudice, anticipation, attachment, or distortion. The grasper-grasped relation has ceased. It should be noted that these purified Cognitions all engage the world in immediate and effective ways by removing the self-bias, prejudice, and obstructions that had prevented one previously from perceiving beyond one's own narcissistic consciousness. When consciousness ends, true knowledge begins. Since enlightened cognition is nonconceptual its objects cannot be described. Five categories of beings. One of the more controversial teachings espoused by the Yogacara school was an extension of the teachings on seeds and store conscious. Based on the Samdhinirmakana Sutra and the Lankavatara Sutra, the Yogacara school posited that sentient beings had innate seeds that would make them capable of achieving a particular state of enlightenment and no other. Thus, beings were categorized in five ways. Beings whose innate seeds gave them the capacity to achieve full Buddhahood i.e. Bodhisattva path. Beings whose innate seeds gave them the capacity to achieve the state of a Pratyeka Buddha, private Buddha. Beings whose innate seeds gave them the capacity to achieve the state of an Arhat. Beings whose innate seeds had an indeterminate nature, and could potentially be any of the above. 
Beings whose innate seeds were incapable of achieving enlightenment ever because they lacked any wholesome seeds. The fifth class of beings, the Ikantika, were described in various Mahayana sutras as being incapable of achieving enlightenment, unless in some cases through the aid of a Buddha or Bodhisattva. Nevertheless, the notion was highly criticized by adherents of the Lotus Sutra, e.g., the Tiantai school, and its teaching of universal Buddhahood. This tension appears in East Asian Buddhist history. <laughs> Alakarkaravada and Satyakaravada An important debate about the reality of mental appearances within Yogacara led to its later subdivision into two systems of Alakarkaravada Tib, RNAMR Jun Pa, false aspectarians and Satyakaravada RNAM BDN Pa, true aspectarians or aspectarians, Akara and non-aspectarians, Anakara. The core issue is whether appearances or aspects RNAM pa, akara of objects in the mind are treated as true BDN pa, satya or false Arjun pa, alika. While this division did not exist in the works of the early Yogacara philosophers, tendencies similar to these views can be discerned in the works of Yogacara thinkers like Dharmapala c. 530–561, and Sauthiramati c. 510 to 570. According to Yaroslav Komarovsky, the distinction is: although Yogacaras in general do not accept the existence of an external material world, according to Satyakaravada, its appearances or aspects (RNAM pa, akara) reflected in consciousness have a real existence because they are of one nature with the really existent consciousness, their creator. According to Alakakaravada, neither external phenomena nor their appearances and, in the minds that reflect them really exist. What exists in reality is only primordial mind ESHES, Jayanana, described as self-cognition or individually self-cognizing primordial mind so -so -ar rang -gis -rig topic history The Yogacara along with the Madhyamaka is one of the two principal philosophical schools of Indian Mahayana Buddhism while the Tathagatagarva thought was also influential topic origination One of the earliest texts of this tradition is the Samdhinirmakana Sutra which might be as early as the 1st or 2nd century CE. It includes new theories such as the basis consciousness and the doctrine of representation only and the three natures. However, these theories were not completely new, as they have predecessors in older theories held by previous Buddhist schools, such as the Sautrantika theory of seeds and the Stavira Nikaya's Abhidharma theory of the Bhavanga. Richard King has also noted the similarity of the Sautantrika representationalism and the Yogacara. The Sautrantika accept that it is only the form or representation of an object which is perceived. Where the schools differ is in the Yogacara refusal to accept the validity of discussing external objects as causes nimitta given that an external object is never directly perceived. The Samdhinirmakana Sutra, as the doctrinal trailblazer of the Yogacara, inaugurated the paradigm of the three turnings of the Wheel of Dharma, with its own tenets in the third turning. Yogacara texts are generally considered part of the third turning along with the relevant sutra. Some traditions categorize this teaching as within the fourth turning of the Wheel of Dharma. Moreover, Yogacara discourse surveys and synthesizes all three turnings and considers itself as the final definitive explanation of Buddhism. The early layers of the Yogacarabhumi Sastra also contains very early Yogacara material, perhaps earlier than the Samdhinirmakana. This work is strongly influenced by Sarvastivada Abhidharma. The orientation of the Yogacara school is largely consistent with the thinking of the Pali Nikayas. 
It frequently treats later developments in a way that realigns them with earlier versions of Buddhist doctrines. One of the agendas of the Yogacara school was to reorient the complexity of later refinements in Buddhist philosophy to accord with early Buddhist doctrine. Topic: <laughs> Asanga and Vasubandhu. Yogacara philosophy's systematic exposition owes much to the Brahmin-born half-brothers Asanga and Vasubandhu. Little is known of these figures, but traditional hagiographies state that Asanga received Yogacara teachings from the Bodhisattva and future Buddha, Maitreya. Accounts of this are given in the writings of Paramatha and Xuanzang, who reports that important texts like the Mahayana Sutra Alamkara and the Majanta Vibhaga are divinely revealed from Maitreya. Asanga went on to write many of the key Yogacara treatises such as the Mahayana Samgraha and the Abhidharma Samakaya as well as other works, although there are discrepancies between the Chinese and Tibetan traditions concerning which works are attributed to him and which to Maitreya. Asanga also went on to convert his brother Vasubandhu into the Mahayana Yogacara fold. Vasubandhu had been a top scholar of Sarvastivada Vivasika and Sautrantika Abhidharma thought, and the Abhidharmakosakarika is his main work which discusses the doctrines of these traditions. Vasubandhu also went on to write important Yogacara works after his conversion, explaining and defending key Yogacara doctrines. <laughs> development in India The Yogacara school held a prominent position in Indian Buddhism for centuries after the time of the two brothers. According to Dan Lusthaus, after Asanga and Vasubandhu, two distinct wings of the school developed a logico epistemic tradition focusing on issues of epistemology and logic, exemplified by such thinkers as Dignaga, Dharmakirti, Santaraksita, and Ratnakirti an Abhidharmic psychology which refined and elaborated Yogacara Abhidharma, exemplified by such thinkers as Sauthiramati, Dharmapala, Salavadra, Xuanzang, Xuanzang and Vinatadeva. However, the doctrines of the Abhidharmic wing came under increased attack by other Buddhists, especially the notion of Alaya Vijnana, which was seen as close to the Hindu ideas of Atman and Prakti. Because of this, the logical tradition shifted over time to using the term Chita Santana instead of Alaya Vijnana, since it was easier to defend a stream Santana of thoughts as a doctrine that did not contradict not self. By the end of the 8th century, the Abhidharma wing has mostly become eclipsed by the logical tradition as well as by a new hybrid school that combined basic Yogacara doctrines with Tathagatagava thought. According to Lusthaus, the Tathagatagava hybrid school was no stranger to the charge of smuggling notions of selfhood into its doctrines, since, for example, it explicitly defined Tathagatagava as permanent, pleasurable, self, and pure nitya, sukha, atman, suda. Many Tathagatagava texts, in fact, argue for the acceptance of selfhood atman as a sign of higher accomplishment. The hybrid school attempted to conflate Tathagatagava with the Alaya Vijnana. Key works of the hybrid school include the Lankavatara Sutra, Ratnagotravabhaga and in China the Awakening of Faith. This syncretic form of Yogacara Tathagatagava became extremely influential in both East Asia and Tibet. During the 6th and 7th centuries, various forms of Yogacara dominated the Chinese Buddhist landscape such as orthodox forms and hybrid Tathagatagava forms. There were feuds between these two approaches to the interpretation of Yogacara. The translator Bodhiruchi, 6th century CE, for example, took an orthodox approach while the Ratnamati was attracted to Tathagatagava thought and sought to translate texts like the Dasabhumaka Sutra in conformity with his understanding. Their disagreement on this issue led to the end of their collaboration as co-translators. The translator Paramatha is another example of a hybrid thinker. 
he promoted a new theory that said there was a ninth form of consciousness, the Amala Vijnana, a pure Vijnana which is revealed once the Alaya Vijnana is eliminated. He also associated his theory with Tathagatagava ideas. According to Lusthaus, Xuanzang's travels to India and his composition of the Cheng Weishi Lun was an attempt to return to a more orthodox and authentic Indian Yogacara and thus put to rest the debates and confusions in the Chinese Yogacara of his time. The Cheng Weishi Lun returns to the use of the theory of seeds instead of the Tathagatagava to explain the phenomena that Tathagatagava is supposed to explain that is, the potentiality for Buddhahood. However, Lusthaus writes that in the 8th century, this schism was finally settled in favor of a hybrid version, which became definitive for all subsequent forms of East Asian Buddhism. Layer Chinese thinkers like F. A. Sang would thus criticize Xuanzang for failing to teach the Tathagatagava in his system. Karl Brunholtzl notes that this syncretic tendency also existed in India, but that, it seems that Yogacara masters generally adopted the notion of Tathagatagava in accordance with the Uttara Tantra only later, when Buddhist Tantra with its very similar notions of ground Tantra and all beings primordially being Buddhas was flourishing. Examples of such Yogacaras include Junian Asramitra, Ratnakarasanti, and the authors of several commentaries on the Prajnaparamita from a Yogacara perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Yogacara and Madhyamaka According to Tibetan sources, this school was in protracted dialectic with the Madhyamaka tradition. However, there is disagreement among contemporary Western and traditional Buddhist scholars about the degree to which they were opposed, if at all. The main difference deals with issues of existence and the nature of emptiness. While Madhyamaka works state that asserting the existence or non-existence of anything was inappropriate including emptiness, Yogacara treatises often assert that the dependent nature really exists and that emptiness is an actual absence that also exists. For example, the Madhyantavabhaga clearly asserts that the imagination of the non-existent exists. In it duality does not exist. Emptiness, however, exists in it. Classical Yogacara thinkers like Asanga and Vasubandhu critique Madhyamakas who adhere to non existence, Nastikas, Vanaskas, because they saw them as straying into nihilism. They held that there was really something which could be said to exist, that is, vinapti, and that was what is described as being empty. The system, the position that Yogacara and Madhyamaka were in dialectic was expounded by Xuanzang in the 7th century. After a suite of debates with exponents of the Madhyamaka school in India, Xuanzang composed in Sanskrit the no longer extant 3000 verse treatise The Non Difference of Madhyamaka and Yogacara. Yogacara and Madhyamaka philosophers demonstrated two opposing tendencies throughout the history of Buddhist philosophy in India one which worked to separate and distance the two systems, and one tendency which worked towards harmonizing them. The harmonizing tendency can be seen in the work of philosophers like Junian Agava 8th century, his student Santaraksita 8th century, and also in the work of the Yogacara thinker Ratnakaraksanti c. 1000. These thinkers also saw the Yogacara Alakakaravada, false aspectarian. Those Yogacaras who believe that mental appearances are false or don't ultimately exist view as the highest. Santaraksita 8th century, whose view was later called Yogacara Svathantrika Madhyamaka, by the Tibetan tradition, saw the Madhyamika position as ultimately true and at the same time saw the Yogacara view as a useful way to relate to conventionalities and progress students more skillfully toward the ultimate. This synthesized view between the two positions, and also incorporated the views of valid cognition pramana from Dignaga and Dharmakirti. Later Tibetan Buddhist thinkers like Shakya Chopdin would also work to show the compatibility of the Alakakravada sub-school with Madhyamaka, arguing that it is in fact a form of Madhyamaka. 
Likewise, the seventh Karmapa Chodrakgam Cho has a similar view which holds that the profound important points and intents of the two systems are one. Ju Mipham is also another Tibetan philosopher whose project is aimed at showing the harmony between Yogacara and Madhyamaka, arguing that there is only a very subtle difference between them, being a subtle clinging by Yogacaras to the existence of an inexpressible, naturally luminous cognition. Rigpa Rang Bz Hin Gyis or Gsal Bar. Topic. Yogacara in East Asia Translations of Indian Yogacara texts were first introduced to China in the early 5th century CE. Among these was Gunavadra's translation of the Lankavatara Sutra in four fascicles, which would also become important in the early history of Chan Buddhism. During the 6th century, the Indian monk and translator Paramatha Gendai 499 widely propagated Yogacara teachings in China, among monks and laypersons. His translations include the Samdhinirmakana Sutra, the Madhyantavabhaga Karika, the Trimsika Vinaptamatrata, and the Mahayanasamgraha, Xuanzang Florida, C. 602–664 is often seen as the most important founder of East Asian Yogacara. At the age of 33, Xuanzang made a dangerous journey to India in order to study Buddhism and procure texts for later translation. Dan Lusthaus writes that Xuanzang had come to the conclusion that issues of dispute in Chinese Buddhism could be resolved with the availability of important texts like the Yogacarabhumi Sastra. Xuanzang spent over ten years in India traveling and studying under various Buddhist masters. Lusthaus writes that during this time, Xuanzang discovered that the manner in which Buddhists understood and interpreted texts was much richer and more varied than the Chinese materials had previously indicated, and drew meaning from a broad cultural context. Xuanzang's teachers included Salavadra, the abbot of Nalanda, who was then 106 years old and who tutored him for ten years. Upon his return from India, Xuanzang brought with him 657 Buddhist texts, including important Yogacara works such as the Yogacarabhumi. He was given government support and many assistants for the purpose of translating these texts into Chinese. As an important contribution to East Asian Yogacara, Xuanzang composed the Cheng Wei Shi Lun, or Discourse on the Establishment of Consciousness Only. This work is framed around Vasubandhu's Trimsika Vinaptamatrata, or 30 verses on consciousness only. In his commentary, Xuanzang upheld Dharmapala's commentary on this work as being the correct one, and provided his own explanations of these as well as other views. This work was composed at the behest of Xuanzang's disciple Kui Ji and became a central work of East Asian Yogacara. Xuanzang also promoted devotional meditative practices toward Maitreya. Xuanzang's disciple Kui Ji wrote a number of important commentaries on Yogacara texts and further developed the influence of this doctrine in China. He was recognized by later adherents as the first true patriarch of the school. The tradition was also brought to Korea, where it is known as Biopsang, and Japan, where it is known as Hoso. Principal exponents of Yogacara in Korea include Dae Hyon, Da Sian Sinheng, Shane Zing 704-779, Won Chuk, Yuan C 631-696, and Won Hyo, Yuan C O Won Hyo 617-686, while in Japan they include Chitsu, Ji Tong and Chidatsu, Ji Door of the Kusha Shu School, Dosho, Dao Zhao Joke, Zhen King Zen. Shanju Tokuitsu. Day. Topic: Yogacara in Tibet. Yogacara was first transmitted to Tibet by Santaraksita, Kamalasila, and Atisa. And Yogacara thought is an integral part of the history of Tibetan Buddhism. Yogacara is studied in all schools of Tibetan Buddhism, though it receives different emphasis in each. 
Like the Chinese tradition, the Tibetan Nyingma school and its Jogshan teachings promote a hybrid form of Yogacara Tathagatagava. The Jonang school meanwhile developed its own systematic view which they termed Shentong, other voidness. Wiley, Ji Zan Stong, which included elements from Yogacara, Madhyamaka, and Tathagatagava. They considered this view to be definitive, in contrast to the Rangtong, self voidness, or Prasangika, Wiley, Rang Stong, comprising both Svathantrika and Prasangika Madhyamaka, although Jasongkapa, whose reforms to Atisa's Kadam tradition are generally considered the beginnings of the Gelug school, argued in favor of Yogacara views, specifically regarding the existence and functioning of eight consciousnesses. Early in his career, the prevailing Gelug view eventually came to hold Yogacara views as a matter of interpretable meaning, therefore distinct from Madhyamaka, which was held to be of definitive meaning. Current discussions between Tibetan scholars regarding the differences between Shentong and Rangtong views may therefore appear similar to historical debates between Yogacara and Madhyamaka, but the specific distinctions have, in fact, evolved much further. Although later Tibetan views may be said to have evolved from the earlier Indian positions, the distinctions between the views have become increasingly subtle and complex, especially as Tibetan Yogacara has evolved to incorporate Madhyamaka and Tathagatagava philosophies. Jamgon Ju Mipham Gyacho, the 19th century Rime movement commentator, wrote in his commentary on Santaraksita's synthesis that the ultimate view in both schools is the same, and that each path leads to the same ultimate state of abiding. <laughs> Textual corpus Topic. Sutras The Samdhinirmakana Sutra, Sutra of the Explanation of the Profound Secrets, 2nd century CE, was the seminal Yogacara Sutra and continued to be a primary referent for the tradition. Another text, the Mahayanavidamasu, is often quoted in Yogacara works and is assumed to also be an early Yogacara sutra. The Lankavatara sutra also later assumed considerable importance in East Asia, and portions of this text were considered by Etienne Lamotte as being contemporaneous with the Samdhinirmakana. This text equates the Yogacara theory of Alayavijnana with the Tathagatagava and thus seems to be part of the tradition which sought to merge Yogacara with Tathagatagava thought. <laughs> Asanga, Vasubandhu and early Sastras Some of the earliest Yogacara material can be found in the Yogacara Bhumi Sastra, such as the doctrines of Alayavijnana and Asrayaparavti. This text, a massive encyclopedic work on yogic praxis, is traditionally attributed to Asanga 4th century or Maitreya, but most scholars such as Schmihausen and Aramaki believe it contains the work of many authors, and its components reflect various stages of historical development. Most of its material is non-Mahayana and according to Lusthaus, it draws extensively from on the Agamas. Nevertheless, Asanga may still have influenced its development. Authorship of several major Yogacara treatises or sastras are ascribed to Asanga, a major doctrinal systematizer of the school. Among them are his magnum opus, the Mahayana Samgraha, and also a compendium of Yogacara Abhidharma, the Abhidharma Samukhaya. Asanga's brother Vasubandhu is also considered to be an important Yogacara figure. He wrote various important sastras, including the Trisvavava Nirdesa, Treatise on the Three Natures, Vimsatika Karika, Treatise in Twenty Stanzas, Trimsika Karika, Treatise in Thirty Stanzas, Vyakyakti, Proper Mode of Exposition. Karmasidhiprakarana, a treatise on karma, and the Pankaskanda Prakarana explanation of the five aggregates. According to J. Garfield, the Trisvavava Nirdesa is arguably one of the most philosophically detailed and comprehensive work on the three natures by Vasubandhu. Vasubandhu also wrote a large systematic work on Abhidharma, the Abhidharmakosa Basya, which remains influential in Tibet and East Asia. 
According to Robert Kritzer, though this work is traditionally seen as being based on Sarvastivada and Sautrantika Abhidharma, it also contains Yogacara influences drawn from the Yogacara Bhumi. Other figures and texts According to Williams, there is a fairly early Yogacara work surviving in Sanskrit called the Alokamala Garland of Light of Kambala c. 450-525, which gives of a form of Yogacara just prior to the vigorous critical Majjhimika response to it represented by the works of Bhava Viveka. Williams also notes that this work tries to harmonize where possible the Majjhimika position with that of Yogacara. Important commentaries on various Yogacara texts were written by Sauthiramati 6th century and Dharmapala of Nalanda 6th century, who represent different subschools of the tradition. The Indian Buddhist logician Dignaga c. 480-540 CE wrote an important Yogacara work, the Alambanapariksa and its VRTTI commentary. The work of Dharmakirti also shows Yogacara influence. The Chinese figure of Xuanzang (602–664) wrote a commentary, Ch. Wei Lun, Skt. Reconstruction, Vinaptamatratasiddhi asterisk on the Trimsika of Vasubandhu, for which he used numerous Indian commentaries, favoring the work of Dharmapala. In the East Asian Yogacara tradition, this is the central work on Yogacara philosophy. Besides the works of Asanga and Vasubandhu outlined above, the Yogacara tradition as it is understood in Tibetan Buddhism is also based on a series of texts called the Five Dharmas of Maitreya. These are the Mahayana Sutralamkara, Dharma Dharma Tavabhaga, Majantavivagakarika, Abhisamalankara, and the Ratnagotravabhaga. These texts are traditionally said to have been related to a Sangha by the Bodhisattva Maitreya from Tuzi to Heaven. According to D.S. Rueg, the five works of Maitreya are mentioned in Sanskrit sources from only the 11th century onwards. As noted by S.K. Hookham and Paul Williams, their attribution to a single author has been questioned by modern scholars, especially the Abhisamalankara and the Ratnagotravabhaga which focuses on Tathagatagava. There are also various commentaries on these texts from Indian and Tibetan authors that are important in the Tibetan scholastic tradition. According to Karl Brunholtzl, the Chinese tradition also speaks of five Maitreya texts first mentioned in Dunlun's Yujia Lunji, but considers them as consisting of the Yogacara Bhumi, Asterisk Yogavivaga now lost, Mahayana Sutralamkaraka, Majantavabhaga and the Vajracheda Kakavyakya. Topic: <laughs> Contemporary scholarship. According to Lusthaus, Etienne Lamotte, a famous student of Louis de la Vallée Poussin, profoundly advanced Yogacara studies, and his efforts remain unrivaled among Western scholars. Philosophical dialogue, Yogacara, idealism and phenomenology Yogacara has also been identified in the Western philosophical tradition as idealism, or more specifically subjective idealism. This equation was standard until recently, when it began to be challenged by scholars such as Kachumatam, Anika, Kalupahana, Dunn, Lusthaus, Powers, and Wayman. Buddhist scholar J. Garfield continues to uphold the equation of Yogacara and idealism, however. To the same effect, Nobuyoshi Yamabe states that, Dignaga also clearly inherited the idealistic system of Yogacara. Like many contemporary scholars, Yamabe is aware that the texts considered to be Yogacara treatises reflect various stages in addressing the issue of mind and matter. Yogacara has also been aligned with phenomenalism. In modern Western philosophical discourse, Edmund Husserl and Maurice Merleau-Ponty have approached what Western scholarship generally concedes to be a standard Yogacara position. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy 
There are two important aspects of the Yogacara Skamata that are of special interest to modern day practitioners. One is that virtually all schools of Mahayana Buddhism came to rely on these Yogacara explanations as they created their own doctrinal systems, including the Zen schools. For example, the early Zen tradition in China was sometimes referred to simply as the Lankavatara school, ch. Ling Jia Zong Ling Che Zong, due to their strong association with the Lankavatara Sutra. This sutra draws heavily upon Yogacara theories of the eight consciousnesses, especially the Alayavijnana. Accounts recording the history of this early period are preserved in records of the Lankavatara masters ch. Ling Jia Shi Zi Ji Ling Che Shi Zi Ji. That the scriptural tradition of Yogacara is not yet well known among the community of Western practitioners is perhaps attributable to the fact that most of the initial transmission of Buddhism to the West has been directly concerned with meditation and basic doctrines. However, within Tibetan Buddhism more and more Western students are becoming acquainted with this school. Very little research in English has been carried out on the Chinese Yogacara traditions. Topic. See also Cheng Weishi Lun, Discourse on the Perfection of Consciousness Only Lambert Schmehausen Trimsika Vijnaptamatrata 30 verses on consciousness only Vimsatika Vijnaptamatrata Siddhi 20 verses on consciousness only Notes <laughs> <laughs>